Welcome to Cast of Wonders, the fiction audio magazine for young adults featuring stories of the fantastic. I'm Graham Dunlop. Today we present part two of Fearing the Invasion by Eric Del Carlo. If you missed part one, it's episode 25, just the last one back. Please go and listen to that one first. We gave Eric's bio last episode, so check the show notes for episode 25 if you want to know more. Or you can find out more about Eric at www.ericdelcarlo.com. We asked Eric if there was anything special he'd like to say about this story. He said that if it's received well, he'd certainly consider expanding it into a novel. Something to think about. So let's go with part two. And now we've a tale to tell. Fiddy frowned, and a less frantic fear started to take a hold of her. Hey, Brock? She called. Hey, up here! She looked up. Relief swept through her, but it was followed quickly by anger. Brock had scaled his way up to the tower's upper level. He was looking down at her now through one of the floor's gaping holes. He had walked away from his task, which was to keep watch on her when she was in the water. He had left her. Damn it, Brock! She heard herself yell, surprised by the force of her voice and temper. Her cry echoed through the hollowed-out tower. You're supposed to be! I know, I know! He was waving his hands. He looked both apologetic and excited. Fiddy, I'm sorry. I swear I am, but... You're not going to believe what I found up here. He was motioning her to come up. Fiddy stood a moment longer, determined to hang on to this anger. Safety was important, more important than anything else. But curiosity grew on her, too. She knew Brock wouldn't have abandoned her for no reason at all. Muttering, she went to the beam that stood near the hole in the floor above, obviously where Brock had climbed. There were lots of hand and foot holes on the column, and she went up easily. It seemed like there was some kind of strange sound coming from above, but she couldn't be sure. Brock put his hand down to help her up, like he should have done when she'd come up from the water, she thought sharply. When she was standing on the new level of the tower, she drew in a breath, ready to launch into a diatribe. Instead, though, she found herself suddenly silent and staring and gaping. Brock had been right. She didn't believe what was up here. There were four kittens, and they were nestled together on a bundle of rags. They had to be newly born. Their bodies were tiny, their ears too big for their little skulls. Brock was sitting nearby them, gently stroking their heads with his finger. They were all mewing like a chorus. That was the sound she'd heard, those plaintive cries. Brock looked up at her, grinning and shrugging. I thought it was a baby up here. I had to come see. Sorry I left you. Forget it, Fiddy said, crouching next to him, looking at the collection of newborn felines. They were so cute, it made her heart throb. But she was wondering where they had come from. That was the important question. They were surrounded by water, isolated. She couldn't imagine the cruelty necessary for someone to bring these kittens purposefully out here and leave them. No one from the local, absolutely no one, would do that. But then, how? Fiddy frowned again, trying to think the mystery through. Her thoughts were interrupted. A sudden animal yowl sounded. No pitiful little kitty's meow this. This was a true feline growl, full of menace and warning. She and Brock both looked up. At a hole eroded through the outer wall, a dark shape stood, glistening. Fiddy couldn't hold back a gasp. The creature wasn't as big as it seemed, though, she realized. It had arched its back, the way cats did when threatened. It was an adult cat. Its gray fur was short, very short. It was also wet. 
Yellow eyes glimmered as it continued to make that unnerving, deep, growling sound. Fiddy, after a moment, saw that a small fish lay on the ground before it, and it all snapped together for her. She understood. She touched Brock's shoulder. These are her babies. Let's back away now. Okay. It was still her expedition as far as he was concerned, apparently. He followed her lead. They left the nestling kittens who were still mewing, probably hungry, or just missing their mama, Fiddy thought. But Mama Cat had gone hunting. No, not hunting. Fishing. That cat had been in the water. Incredible. It must have its own ways in and out of here. This tower belonged to her and her children. Fiddy was perfectly happy to let her have it. She and Brock slipped down through the big hole in the floor. Any thoughts of rescuing the kittens vanished. They didn't need rescue. They had their mama to take care of them. A cat who had adapted to the water. A short-furred animal, like an otter, who could swim and catch fish with its paws. It was a creature who had adjusted to this semi-drowned earth, the same way people had over the many years since the disaster. They took Brock's fabric, her cable, and waterproof sack, pushed off the canoe, and took up their paddles once more. Enough salve for today. They didn't even have to say anything about it. They just headed for home. Fiddy felt a lingering sense of wonder over that cat. She and Brock eventually spoke of it in hushed voices as they paddled through the waning day. When they got to the reedy shore of the local, they hauled up the canoe and put it back where they'd gotten it. Brock wound her cable up into a bundle and carried it, which was nice of him. But then he was a nice boy. Fiddy gave him a smile, and before they set out on the road to where the local shanties were, they had a kiss. It was their second one, and she enjoyed it better than the first. He seemed to like it too. They were halfway down the road when the sound of an engine interrupted the quiet of the day. Fiddy and Brock paused, and sure enough, here came one of the vehicles. She saw the ancient solar collectors on its roof. It came bounding along the dirt track, going much too fast, Fiddy thought. Behind it were two bicycles, both riders pedaling crazily. When the vehicle got close, it slammed on its brakes. The tires threw clouds of dust everywhere. Fiddy put her arm over her eyes on the verge of swearing again. She and Brock had already stepped off the road. As the dust cleared, a head popped up out of the rambling, rattling car. It was a groan, of course. Only groans drove those motorized things. Fiddy recognized Saburo, an older groan, one of those, in fact, who had been working with the detecting equipment these past several months. His eyes were wide. He looked frantic. Get in! He yelled at her and Brock. Fiddy peered through the still-settling dust and saw that several other people were already stuffed into the car. They looked as frightened as Saburo. A woman the same age as Fiddy's mother was poking Saburo, who was at the vehicle's wheel, telling him to go. Go! Taking a single stride forward, Fiddy asked in a calm, direct voice, What's going on? The others in the solar-powered vehicle were all shouting now, some urging her and Brock to pile in. Others, like the woman with the poking finger, telling Saburo to just leave them. But the old man cried to Fiddy and Brock, It's the invasion! They're here! Come on, we've got to get away! For the second time today, Fiddy found herself gaping, stunned. As she stood there, the two bicyclists overtook the stationary vehicle. The riders were a pair of groans. Neither was Fiddy's mother, or either of Brock's parents. The two went pedaling wildly past without a pause. Brock stepped up alongside Fiddy. His face was tense, but he wasn't panicky. He turned to her and said, I think we ought to check it out for ourselves. Fiddy gave him a sharp nod, grateful to him, though she wasn't sure why. She didn't like the idea of running away, even if this really was the invasion. Saburo had waited long enough. 
He gunned the engine, and the car lurched off down the road, sputtering. They probably wouldn't get very far with the vehicle overloaded like that. Looking up, Fiddy saw the same clear sky, just beginning to fade as the afternoon stretched. There were no ships hovering up there. That was what the groans had talked about. Big ships dropping from above, bringing the invaders. Wordlessly, she and Brock laid down what they were carrying. He took hold of her hand, and together, they continued along the road. It was a ship. It had to be. Not a boat, not a watercraft of any kind. Instead, a skycraft. Or really, a spacecraft. The ship had landed, that must have been something to see, Fiddy thought a little giddily, at the center of the local structures where the people lived fairly close together. Fiddy and her mother lived further out towards the northerly hills. Here the detecting gear was set up inside one of the shanties. That was why the invasion had started at this place, Fiddy thought, with that same snapping clarity as earlier. It's beautiful, Brock said. He meant the ship. They were still holding hands, standing a ways off. Fiddy felt a small, timid smile move her lips. I think so, too. She whispered it. They weren't the only people on the scene. Not everyone had fled. It wasn't just the younger people who had stayed, though there weren't a lot of groans lingering, and none of the true old-timers Fiddy saw. Let's go closer, she suggested. Okay. Together, they went. The ship was a beauty indeed. It looked powerful yet elegant. It had been designed and built with obvious intelligence. This craft had traveled the stars. Fantastic. But this meant, undeniably, that the invasion had come. The invaders were here. Viddy's heart beat rapidly and her hand felt slick in Brock's. Maybe they should run away after all. Maybe it would be smarter if they... No. Not everyone had talked about the possible invasion the same way. There were other opinions, less dire ones. Fiddy's mother, for one, had spoken to her about the potential arrival, and she hadn't gotten hysterical or gloomy about the idea. She had even hinted that maybe it wouldn't be a bad thing if the invasion happened. Well, now it had happened, and Fiddy would face it. If this was a new age for the Earth, if ships like this one were right now landing all over the world and meeting the scattered, surviving people, then Fiddy would adapt to that new era for her planet, like the cat who had acclimatized herself to the water. That was if this invasion didn't actually mean the end of everything, like some of the oldest groans had said. It wasn't a huge ship. It wouldn't have blotted out the sky when it came in, as some of the locals had been predicting. Still, it was big enough for a fair-sized crew. What, though, would that crew be like? Fiddy shivered involuntarily. She and Brock had moved up among the other people who were gathered, watching. Nobody speaking. The ship winked with lights, and it hummed. Well, you had to have an engine if you were crossing space, Fiddy noted. Maybe her prejudice against machines was a bad thing, or at least unnecessary. It was how the machines were used that mattered. The ship's humming noise was winding down, and you could hear the natural sounds of the day ending again. The sigh of the breeze, chirps from the birds. But still, no one spoke and the quiet grew eerie. But when that quiet ended suddenly, it was startling. There was a loud, mechanical clank. Everyone who had assembled in a circle around the landing site jumped back, Fiddy and Brock included. The craft had landed on four clawed metal feet, and now a ladder of sorts had dropped from the ship's snout-like front end. This is it, this is it, Fiddy thought. The invasion! She fought back the urge to flee knowing it wouldn't do any good. If these invaders wanted to find her, they would. They could find anybody, anywhere on the planet, she felt sure. In those final flickering seconds, 
she looked across the ragged circle of onlookers and spotted her mother. Her mother's eyes were as wide in her face as the burrows had been, but she wasn't panicking. Fiddy didn't rush to her. She didn't want to let go of Brock's hand, but she was glad her mother was nearby. The humming died out entirely, but there was a new sound, footsteps on the metal stairs. The ship's crew was descending. They came into view. They wore dark, shiny clothing. They carried instruments. They didn't hurry. They stepped out onto the surface. After a long, measuring moment, the one who had led the others down lifted something from the belt which cinched the stranger's suit middle. It appeared to be a male, though his hair was twisted up into some bizarre shape. When he spoke, with an adult male's deep voice, his words were amplified. They carried easily to everyone assembled, and, Fiddy thought as she listened, the words would keep right on carrying across the face of the earth, reaching everyone who had feared these invaders. My fellow human beings, we are representatives of the great colonies. We have at long last returned to the beleaguered wellspring of our species to offer assistance to those who were left behind by our ancestors. We mean you no harm. We... We have so wanted to meet all of you. After the speech, Fiddy turned and pecked another quick kiss at Brock. He had spotted his own parents at the edge of the crowd. Fiddy ran to her mother. When she got to her, she found herself babbling not about this wondrous visitation by these long-lost children of the earth, but rather about the aquatic cat she had discovered today. Her mother smiled and nodded and held her as tears flowed from her eyes. Maybe these visitors, who seemed nice, would understand that nobody here needed rescuing. And so ends Fearing the Invasion. What did you think of the story? Would you like to see it expanded into a novel? Come tell us what you thought of the story in the forums at castofwonders.org slash forums. We love bringing you this free podcast, but the stories don't come for free. We pay the authors for them. If you'd like to support Cast of Wonders, visit our webpage at castofwonders.org. You'll see two donate buttons there, one for one-time donations and one for monthly donations. We'd greatly appreciate you hitting one of those buttons. Cast of Wonders is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. Share it, but don't change it or sell it. Theme is Appeal to Heavens by Alexei Nov from musicalley.com. <laughs>